Good evening, everyone. This is uh, Richard Franklin. I'm the chair of the Se District 72 Campbell River uh, School Di School Board. And uh, with me tonight at this meeting, we have uh, Dr. Jeremy Morrow, who is our superintendent. Trustees, uh, Trustee Briggs is, is at her home in Sayward. Trustee Wilson uh, is at her home on Quadra Island. And here on Vancouver Island, uh, Cam River, we have Trustee Hagen, Trustee McMahon, Trustee Kerr, and Trustee Eddie. We also have with us uh, Associate Superintendent Morgan Kyle, Associate Superintendent Phil Sismic. We have our Secretary Treasurer, Kevin Patrick, and our Confidential Secretary, Leanne Cruz. And I shall begin by acknowledging that this meeting is taking place on the traditional territory of the Lakota people, Gala Kasla. This meeting is taking place electronically, and this is a first for the Board of Education in School District 72. We're live streaming the meeting so that members of the public can still observe the proceedings. And we will still take questions from the public on items relevant to tonight's, to tonight's agenda. Uh, questions will be able to be submitted through the Q&A feature in the live stream, and uh, I will be answering those at the end of the meeting. Uh, instructions will be provided when we get to that portion of tonight's agenda, uh, if you haven't figured it out already. Many thanks go out to everyone in School District 672 who have been working since March 23 to plan how our district will provide uh, remote learning opportunities as we help keep our students, their families, and our employees safe. Health and safety are paramount. Our senior management team has been socially distancing, but speaking daily with representatives of the Cam River and District Teachers Association, the Canadian Union of Public Employees, and the Cam River Principals and Vice Principals Association. The level of cooperation, patience, thoughtfulness, and care is so appreciated by your Board of Education. Like everyone else, I'm hopeful that we will see a positive effect from social distancing. To further help our essential service workers, school districts around the province, we'll be developing local plans to help provide care for the children of essential service workers. Our senior management team will work with our local uh, health officer to establish guidelines to make sure the care we offer the children of essential service workers is as safe as it can be for the children, as well as any staff who will help provide this important community service. Social distancing gives our community and medical system a fighting chance against COVID-19. It's important that we try to limit and spread the number of cases out so that our healthcare system will continue to have the beds and equipment available as people need it. We also need to give our scientists and medical experts time to find a vaccine for the disease. I understand that there are some in our community who think their young age and health will prevail, but as we can see in other countries in the world, Anyone of any age can become seriously ill from COVID-19. So this week, teachers have been calling students at home to connect, um, and last week they were doing that too. Uh, teachers are working together in teams to try to come up with thoughtful, sustainable, and consistent approaches in the district. And this team approach is very important, and communication between principals, teachers, and support staff is very important. Now, I was a teacher and my three kids attended school in Cam River. And as a teacher, I thought I did a pretty good job. But when it came to helping my own kids with their homework, well, let's just say it's different when it's your own kids. Parents, please don't stress about schoolwork. You have enough on your plate. The kids are gonna be fine if we keep it light and keep it fun and keep it interesting. I'm going to repeat that. Keep it light and keep it fun 
and keep it interesting. Children and youth are learning organisms. Watch as babies encounter the world. It's amazing to see how they are constantly learning. During this time, children, youth and adults can learn about patients, about caring for others and about taking care of one's own mental health. So take care everyone, stay safe and well. And now for the superintendent's comments, over to you, Dr. Morrow. You're gonna have to unmute your mic, Jeremy. Sorry, Dr. Morrow. Sorry, I think, am I unmuted now, Kai? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, so at first, I just want to start by uh, expressing my gratitude uh, for the role of the board uh, in this response to COVID-19 and this unprecedented time in the sector of education. Uh, I know the trust that the board places in staff, uh, we don't take lightly, and we are grateful uh, for, for their support as we have been encouraged to uh, plan meaningful activities for uh, the youth in our care and ensuring that in doing so that all staff are safe in the provision of this uh, of this work i just want to acknowledge that this has been a rapidly and evolve rapidly evolving and dynamic situation uh, i will be providing a little an update a little later in the agenda where i will take the opportunity to to share a bit more about some of the plans that are happening so I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to really recognize that in the midst of these difficult circumstances, that the leaders of the teachers and QP union and the president of the uh, CRPDPA, the Principals and Vice Principals Association, have been tireless in their dedication and commitment in ensuring that as an entire team, we respond to the challenge that this health crisis has presented. Uh, collectively, every member of our organization is determined to be supportive to the students uh, that we serve and the families that they are from. And in the uncertainty of these moments, that we are united in the desire to ensure that every single one of our students has a meaningful connection with an adult within our system. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and recognize that our maintenance, custodial, and school board office staff have continued uninterrupted in their work. And I'd like to thank them for that. I'd also like to thank all of our parents who have been patient as staff have been working hard to plan and create a plan, uh, working hard to plan for a continuity of learning and how that may look once we, until such time as we are able to resume more normal operations of schools. I wanna thank our principals and vice principals who have been present since the end of spring break in our schools and ensuring that all staff are entering schools following the proper protocols and they've been instrumental in supporting their staffs and developing learning plans for their students. Lastly, I wanted to acknowledge that the role of custodians in our system has always been a critical one, but the health crisis really brings additional recognition to this vital role in our schools. And I'm grateful for the dedication of our custodial staff who are working very hard each and every day to ensure that our work sites and our schools remain safe for staff to come and go from those places. And it's important to me too, we, we put out a video to connect with our students. And I just want to acknowledge that our students are playing a vital role in the flattening of the curve for COVID. I want to thank those students who are staying home, who are maintaining their physical distance, who are practicing proper hygiene and washing their hands a lot. I also want to thank those students for being good uh, to your parents, helping out around the house, and just remind you that we all know how important the connection that you all have with your friends is and that we uh, ask that in this time you maintain physical distance that you connect with social media and over your phones and that this is your time to contribute to ensure the health and well-being and the safety of your loved ones i think our youth are up to this challenge they're rising to this occasion and i want to also assure each and every student that in these uncertain times, that there is something you can be certain of, and that is that each person in your school and in your home is interested in ensuring that you are successful and supportive and that you can trust in that peace. And that over this time, while it may be disruptive, we will ensure that you are all ready uh, for school whenever we resume. So I just wanna thank everybody for their contribution. Uh, thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Morrow. And uh, now we're going to move to the next item of business on our agenda, and that is the approval of the minutes of the meetings of February 25, 2020 and March 10, 2020. Trustees, you have the exhibits there. And the suggested motion is that the minutes of the meeting of February 25, 2020 and March 10, uh, 2020 are hereby approved as circulated and amended. And for that, I will need a mover and a seconder. So move, Kerr. So move, so Hagen. Mo Moved, Kerr, seconded, Hagen. I'd like to uh, make a note that I am marked as present on the meeting of March the 10th, and yet, unfortunately, I was not. So um, just have that corrected, please. Uh, so noted. Thank you. OK, if there's no other discussion on the approval of the minutes, I shall go through the roll call. Trustee Briggs. Uh, we'll go Trustee Wilson. I'm here, but I just received a pop up saying that my computer is going to restart um <laughs> automatically and it must restart to complete the installation of applications and software updates so i might be disappearing in 14 minutes and three seconds okay i think you, sometimes you can delay that <laughs> it does uh, look like it but um we'll see okay how do you vote i'm trustee? here my my mute button was stuck on okay trusty breaks <laughs> yeah yes yes trusty wilson Yes, Trusty I'm here Hagen. now. Trustee Hagen? Yes. <coughs> Trustee McMahon? Yes. Trustee Kerr? Yes. Trustee Eddy? Yes. Okay, the motion is carried. Are there any, uh, is there any business arising from the minutes? Hearing none, I shall move forward. Are there any additions or alterations to the agenda? OK, hearing none, I shall move forward uh, to the approval of the agenda. And uh, the motion is that the agenda is hereby approved as circulated or amended. And I would like to hear a mover and a seconder. So moved. I'll move that, Susan. Uh, Trustee Eddy. Moved, Second Trustee Eddy. Okay, seconded Eddy, and the mover was? Susan. Susan Wilson, okay. Is there any discussion on the approval of the agenda? Okay, hearing none, we'll go through the vote. Trustee Briggs. Approved. Wilson? Yes. Trustee Hagen? Yes. Trustee McMahon? Approved. Trustee Kerr? Yes. Trustee Eddy? Yes. The motion is carried and the agenda is hereby approved as circulated. Okay, now we're going to turn the uh, table over to Dr. Morrow to discuss the continuity of learning. Uh, thank you, Board Chair Franklin. Uh, I think your opening comments uh, were very thorough in regards to a number of the pieces that are happening in our district around continuity of learning. And I think it's important to acknowledge that this uh, health crisis is particularly challenging for families and it's challenging for families in many different ways. We recognize that many in our community have recently lost jobs or potentially adjusting and trying to adjust to working at home amongst some of just a few of the challenges. So we know that these various factors impact our family's ability uh, to support continuity of learning. Example of this may be a family who's uh, who where now there's a worker trying to work from home uh, that is using the only device in the house. Uh, and with this in mind, we just wanted to make sure that the first focus that we have is making sure 
that the creation of these learning opportunities for students does not create additional pressures and additional stresses on our families. With that in mind, last week, our expectation was that teachers would connect with students and families uh, and to, to solicit some feedback and to understand uh, what some of those individual circumstances may be and to allow that feedback to guide their planning in the development of relevant learning opportunities. We wanted those opportunities to make sense for the teachers' classes that they have as well as for individual students. And so these plans are starting to take shape and we expect that uh, very soon all students will have the beginnings of learning plans. I think we can expect those um, at the latest by the start of next week. I want to also acknowledge that our educational assistants, our youth care workers, our indigenous support workers, our school counselors, and our learning support teachers are a key factor in our planning. And our intention is that these individuals will be providing additional supports to our students and families. One of our concerns in the delay of a return to school is that there are a number of families uh, whose students we serve with food programs in our schools and we have uh, had staff working very hard to create uh, a plan for continuity of some food services. I'm happy to to share that on Friday this week uh, we will be delivering some uh, food to some of those homes that uh, require those additional supports and we're fortunate to have our bus drivers as well as support staff uh, step up to to deliver those food packages uh, as well as to help sort and uh, sort the groceries and prepare packages for deliveries. We continue to work on a plan uh, to provide childcare support for our frontline workers who are conducting a needs assessment and we'll be working with our community as soon as we have uh, those plans uh, and have more clarity around how we will do so. Uh, I just want to say again that uh, for, uh, for families uh, that if they are uh, asking for, for more information about the continuity of learners, uh, the plan for their own children, uh, to feel free to connect with your child's teacher, uh, with your school principal, and ensure that the plan that is in place makes sense for you and for your family. Uh, I just want to recognize as well uh, that as I have listened and, sh and heard uh, from families, from students and from teachers, uh, that we are appreciative of the work that our teachers are doing to ensure that uh, students are provided meaningful work. Uh, and I know uh, that we also have a number of students uh, that I want to that have a specific need and those are our grade 12 students. Uh, we have a commitment from the Ministry of Education that they're working closely with post-secondary uh, institutions to ensure that this disruption to uh, students education will not cause uh, any harm in their entrance or acceptance into university. I know teachers are working hard at those levels to ensure that the learning opportunities that are provided will adequately prepare students for the start uh, of university and some of those academic classes, ensuring that those uh, basic uh, understandings uh, have been delivered. Uh, as well, I uh, want to make a commitment that uh, I know, particularly for those grade 12 students, they've worked really hard for these last few months to share uh, their successes and to celebrate together uh, the work that they've done over 13 years of dedication and hard work in our system. We are committed to ensuring that whether it needs to be delayed or altered, that we'll find a way for those students to celebrate uh, the great work that they've done. And I do acknowledge that for our grade 12s, uh, that this is particularly unsettling. Uh, I want to acknowledge that for all of our students, uh, those of us that are a little older uh, can look and, and think maybe it's six months, maybe it's three months, maybe it's two months. Uh, much less significant period of time than when you're younger. We recognize the impact on our students and our heart is to ensure that we will provide every possible chance for those students to uh, have normalcy and to be well prepared for their next steps. So that's an update on the continuity of learning. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Morrow. And uh, now we're going to we're moving on to the next uh, educational issue, which is uh, the school calendar. So I'm going to turn it oh, back to you. Franklin. Yes. Just uh, one 
Um, did I miss item seven? Yeah, we'll get to you there. Okay, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, talk about the calendar. So in the public board package is an exhibit that has uh, the proposed three-year calendar. Um, I want to share just briefly the process to arrive at this proposed calendar and as well the feedback that we've received over the past month uh, while it's been online uh, and, and we've solicited and asked for some, some feedback, additional feedback. So before well, there is a, uh, a stakeholder group that or stakeholder committee, the calendar committee has parents, principals, uh, teachers, uh, support staff, uh, as well as students on it uh, that looked at and before with the beginning of the uh, building of these proposed calendars, we received over 400 responses to feedback from our community around priorities that they had and would like to have seen reflected in this calendar. Uh, one of the priorities uh, was echoed over and over and it was not unanimous, but a, a key priority both identified by parents and school staff was a two week spring break. The another priority was a three year calendar but another priority was the alignment of our calendar uh, with uh, the Courtney uh, Campbell or Courtney Comox Valley School District. Uh, over the past month, uh, we received a further 21 comments. And while the majority of the feedback was supportive of the calendars or the, as they are currently uh, built, uh, there were uh, three, four, sorry, comments uh, from parents, particularly expressing a desire to remain as a district with a one week spring break. We had 17 uh, parents respond specifically about maintaining a two week spring break uh, or, or having that two week spring break is favorable. And we received two comments about an alter start to uh, Christmas and one comment about a movement of a professional development day. So although there is never, we've never had a unanimous uh, feedback, uh, the majority of the feedback is supportive of the calendar. It was actually built and designed uh, with feedback uh, right from the beginning and so my recommendation to the board of education is to accept the three uh, year calendar that has been proposed and is in our package uh, are you finished that piece there thank or? you yes yeah. okay so we have a, a motion uh, that the 2020, 2021, 2021, 2022, and the 22-23 school calendars presented by Superintendent Morrow be approved as circulated. Do I have a mover? So moved, Hagen. Moved by Daryl Hagen. Seconded. Seconded, Eddie. Seconded, Eddie. Okay, seconded, Cat Eddie. Thank you. I'd uh, like to try something here, trustees, just uh, just to see if this is all right. Uh, could you unmute, uh, everybody unmute their mic and just say aye or yay or nay? <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the motion was carried unanimously. Okay, now we're going to move on to item seven, report of board decisions from March 31st, 2020 confidential board meeting, Vice Chair Kerr. Um, okay, the board received updates on some of the situation, the provincial, current provincial situation, and also dealt with uh, and received updates on personnel issues and legal issues. Um, the meeting was completed, so we are done for the evening. OK, so now uh, we are going to uh, move to the next item on the agenda, which is business administration, the capital plan bylaw for 2021. Uh, and uh, our secretary treasurer, Kevin Patrick, will Tell us about that those that bylaw. Yeah, 
So there's some good news here. Um, the board was approved for five projects from the school enhancement program, the carbon neutral um, program, and the uh, and from the bus uh, renewal project. Um, the total approved amounts were $2.2 million. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's really good news. So um, we've been fairly successful with our applications from our capital plan uh, that we submitted back in June. And um, with this notification, uh, the board is required to pass a bylaw in order for us to get access to this money. Um, we uh, we will be required to spend this within the next year. So some of the planning for these projects has begun. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just a, a, a step that the um, ministry requires for us to get access to the money. So it is a bylaw. Uh, it does require a unanimous approval to have three readings in one night. Um, and I hope that the board uh, supports that and then is able to uh, read the bylaw for three times tonight and pass it and then we can uh, carry on with our projects. Okay, thank you, Kevin. So uh, the motion is that the capital plan bylaw number 2020-21 CPSD 72-01 for projects identified in the March 5th, 2020 capital plan response letter from the Ministry of Education be given all three readings at this meeting. Now this must be unanimous, so I'm going to I'm going to go through the roll call. Uh, Tristan so Briggs. So moved. moved. Uh, OK, yes. moved uh, by John Kerr. Second seconded, Hagen. seconded by Hagen. Okay, Christy Briggs voted yes. Yes. Trusty Wilson. Her computer may have gone. Yeah. We've lost her. Trusty Hagen. Trusty Hagen. Yes. Trusty McMahon. Trusty McMahon. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Yes. Okay, Trustee Kerr? Yes. Trustee Eddy? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to defer to Kevin Patrick uh, on the question of Trustee Wilson, who's lost her feed. Yes, yeah, so. I've so just she, called Trustee Wilson. She's attempting to log back in. I am afraid that um, unanimous does uh, require uh, would require Trustee Wilson as well, especially because she was present at the beginning of the, the meeting. Um, so I'm just going to maybe um, suggest that the board carry on with the next item and then come back to 13A uh, when Trustee Wilson is able to join us again. Oh, that sounds reasonable. Uh, let's move on to finance warrant number 11. November 30, 2019. For those uh, people in the audience who are uh, watching this, uh, this is something that our district does that not all districts do. Kevin, could you tell us a little bit about finance warrants? Um, yeah, so the uh, the finance warrant is in effect. It's a, a bank. It's a bank reconciliation um, that we do. Uh, but it also provides a disclosure um, to the degree that is not being seen by um, a lot of school districts and public sector uh, at this time. It is a recommendation for good governance that uh, more expenses be disclosed 
And uh, this is actually something that we've been doing for uh, decades, really. Um, and it continues to be uh, um, uh, provided to our board, uh, both for the, the purposes of, well, really for the purposes of disclosure. Um, and uh, I, the disclosure may change and may look different as the uh, governance recommendations uh, from the Ministry of Education to boards. Um, and if at some point we find something that is maybe more appealing to the board, uh, we'll look at adopting that. But until then, I think we'll continue on with uh, uh, providing a finance warrant uh, and its dual purpose to the board. Yeah. And what it does is it, it uh, lists all the checks that are written by the school district, pretty much. I would say uh, there's a total transparency. You can see anyone can see uh, what the money is spent on here. So uh, that's what the finance warrant is all about. So uh, a motion that the finance warrant number 11 dated November 30, 2019 be accepted as presented. Do I hear a mover? Hagen. Trustee Hagen has moved the motion. Uh, seconded, Eddie. Seconded by Trustee Eddie. Okay, Mike's on. Mike's on. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any to the contrary? Could, could I ask a question about the unanimous part of the meeting? Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like Trustee Wilson's back, so I don't have to ask the question. Okay. Thanks, Rich. Okay, bye. Okay, so uh, that motion is carried. Hi, Trustee Wilson. Hi, I'm back. You're back. Great. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to work. <coughs> we are going to uh, uh, have three readings of a uh, capital plan bylaw tonight if you vote in favor of this that the capital plan bylaw number 2020-21 cpsd 72-01 for projects identified in the march 5th 2020 capital plan response letter from the ministry of education be given all three readings at this meeting how do you vote trustee wilson yes Okay, so the, that is unanimous. Now I'm going to present, for, proceed to the three motions. They're all the same. First one is that the capital plan bylaw number 2020-21 CPFD 72-1, the project identified for March 5th, 2020 capital plan response letter from the Ministry of Education is hereby read for the first time. Uh, do we need a mover and seconder for that, Kevin? Yes, we do. It's a okay. full motion, but you can do the I uh, as a group. Okay. Uh, a mover for that? Hagen? So moved. Seconded okay. Wilson. Moved Hagen, seconded Wilson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Okay, none opposed. That the capital plan bylaw number 2020-21 CPSD 72-01 for projects identified in the March 5th, 2020 capital plan response letter from the Ministry of Education is hereby read for the second time. A mover? Moved, so moved, so moved. Uh, seconded Eddie. Okay, moved Kerr, seconded Eddie. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. The motion is carried. And the last reading is that the capital plan bylaw number 2020 21 CPSD 72-01 for projects identified in the March 5th, 2020 capital plan response letter from the Ministry of Education is hereby read for the third time, passed and adopted. A mover. McMahon. Seconded. Wilson. Eddie. Okay, McMahon, 
Wilson. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. The motion is carried. Okay. Now, got to find my agenda. <laughs> okay. The next thing on the agenda is a report from Trustee Kerr on the BCSTA Leadership Conference. Um. Okay, on February 22nd, I attended the leadership conference and it had to do with um, strategic planning. It was presented by our former superintendent and who had also been a superintendent in Abbotsford and was deputy minister in, I believe, Alberta and Saskatchewan. So Julie McRae had a lot of experience and the other presenter was uh, Brian Pepper, former superintendent from School District 57, Prince George. Um, we went through essentially a booklet that uh, that um, Ms. McRae had written, and it started off with uh, a quote that I want to that I want to bring to you: "A well-crafted strate strategic plan assists the board in keeping the focus on student learning, filtering policy and funding decisions through the lens of through the lens of impact on student outcomes, as well as fulfilling its statutory accountability and oversight functions." There were seven components of it, and I just want to briefly go through them. Uh, the first one is creating and, uh, and connecting mission, vision, and values. And our School District 72 strategic plan includes these components. Uh, there's a quote from the BCSTA booklet on this. It said, vision without action is a daydream. Action without vision is a nightmare. So what we have done in you, if you look at the book, you will see that there all of those components are there and they're very neatly tied together. The next section is articulating values and I'll just leave you the quote. Values are to an organization what character is to an individual. So you can see our values there as well. Um, the information gathering, data, environmental scan uh, for our strengths and weaknesses, information gathering, surveys and information gathering surveys in consultation with education partners when this plan was being done all of that was taken all of that was taken into account and uh, we followed that model developing strategies and this is the work of the senior management team um, it's still in development and when it's completed the senior management team will present it to the board however given the current situations situation um, this is probably going to be delayed somewhat. Um, monitoring progress. Um, the di districts will use the data provided by student achievement result, surveys and consultation to monitor progress towards achieving the stated goals. And that's on the last page of our strategic plan. Ongoing monitoring will determine whether modifications of the goals and measures will be needed, will need to be revisited. This plan is a living document and will be reviewed in relation to the goals articulated and may need to be revised if data reveals that the goals are unrealistic. And um, the data might be held up a little bit as well because of the current situation, so we, we will not be moving as quickly on this as I would as I would have hoped a month ago. Uh, the last component is accountability and reporting. And progress reports are expected to be provided to the Minister of Education and the local electorate. As more data becomes available, the results will more accurately reflect our reality. Again, given the current circumstances, that data may be a little, maybe not as timely as we would hope, but it will be coming when things return to some, and some semblance of uh, normalcy. Um, when this School District 72 strategic plan is compared to the BCSTA strategic planning for student success. It's clear that this plan, our School District 72 plan, meets all of the requirements. We are now at the point where implementation of the plan is beginning and the board anticipates that it will receive its preliminary results as, uh, as soon as they can be available. So I think uh, for the most part, we uh, the, the board, senior management, the people in our district have done a really good job of putting together a plan and the added, I guess the added uh, benefit of the whole thing is that we do seem to have tremendous buy-in from all from all segments of the uh, educational community. So that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Tristy Kerr, for your report. 
So now we're going to move on to the questions from anyone present, and I'm going to toggle over here to uh, the live event Q and A. Um, could I just, uh, I'm just going to ask uh, uh, Kevin Patrick, uh, our Secretary Treasurer, could you talk a little bit how how folks can ask a question? Um, yeah, so on the uh, live um, event screen, there is a, a Q and A um, opportunity. Um, I believe it's got a little question mark with the dialog box in it and uh, participants can come in and uh, if you are registered or uh, you can ask a question under your name or you can also ask a question anonymously as well and um, uh, the questions will come through. Uh, um, Chairperson Franklin and I will have a chance to look at the questions before um, determining uh, whether they'll uh, be published and uh, be answered tonight or uh, in the future. So at this point, um, uh, uh, Chair Franklin, I don't see any questions coming in. I was just wondering, uh, Kai, if you could maybe have another. Um, there we go. So the Q&A is open and functioning, uh, and at this point we don't have any new questions. So we could give it a couple more minutes and um, see if any other questions come through. Richard, uh, I was just wondering, this is Daryl, yes. if it would be OK to say something at this time uh, while we're waiting for questions. We got a question coming, and uh, what I think we'll do is uh, well, I think at the end we'll let trustees have a chance to say speak from the heart if they like, and that would include you just before we adjourn. OK, Thank you. so uh, we have a question from Marissa Teal. I know that she's a reporter for our wonderful local newspaper, and the question is at this point, is the district still planning to have graduation ceremonies for students? So Dr. Morrow, I'd like you to answer that question, please. Well, at this time, uh, we're not we're committed to ensuring that there's going to be uh, some way of marking um, convocation. We're not sure what that will look like, and we're not sure yet uh, what the conditions will be in June where they are regularly scheduled. Uh, if a postponement is required, we would certainly work to that end, uh, but we are committed to ensuring that we mark that day meaningfully for those students who have worked so hard to earn it. Thank you. I know that in um, a lot of jurisdictions, uh, the actual graduation ceremony isn't in isn't till the fall. That's why they have the homecoming queen and king and all that sort of stuff. And the United States quite often they do the grads at the end. OK, let's just see if there's any more questions. And then we'll go around the uh, table for final comments. OK, well, we can do our final comments and, and uh, if folks can uh, uh, still want to ask questions, we'll deal with it before the adjournment. So we'll start with Trustee Hagen. Yes, you know, this is certainly one of the most challenging times I've ever seen in uh, Campbell River. But it's interesting that uh, the spirit that I've seen is is wonderful. I, I can't say more than uh, when there's a challenge, uh, it seems to be we find opportunities. And I've seen them everywhere I go. If it's driving down the road, I see people walking um, with space between them down on the walkway. I see them spending more time uh, with uh, uh, their pets on the beach and seem to be trying to find good things in the, in the bad times. I've seen people delivering food. I've seen people uh, in the board office here working extremely hard to make sure that our children are safe, that our staff are safe, and that they're providing a good service. So 
along with the challenging times, I've seen opportunities where real leaders step up to the plate. And uh, I'm really thankful for that. And I'd like to say thank you to Campbell River as a whole. And you're a real example to me when I see people uh, separating themselves, uh, spending time at home, and it's difficult at times, but I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of all the work that everyone's doing, frontline workers and those that are assisting the frontline workers and the people in the board office and throughout our whole district. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Hagen. Uh, Trustee McMahon, would you like to say something? Uh, yes, just I think um, the the dedication and the perseverance that has been shown by those people in the senior management team, particularly working through the spring break. And um, I just can't imagine the challenges of trying to stay on top of the tsunami of information and shifting um, expectations that have come their way over the last two weeks. So I am tremendously grateful for for the perseverance that they have shown and the skill they've shown in handling that. And then, of course, um, there are all those who are working in other capacities to keep our school district healthy in ways other than physical as well as physical. I was um, uh, treated to the uh, new supply of sanitizing solutions that have come into our world uh, at the school board office in having the uh, wonderful experience of smelling like I walked into a brewery <laughs> and being comforted to know that that was all very um, helpful. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee McMahon. Uh, Trustee Wilson. I think what we have heard is extraordinary measures being required of our staff in particular to meet the criteria from the government to meet the needs of families in our community. And I'm just so impressed with the response and the dedication and the hard work and the sharing that has begun to meet those expectations which are just going to really help a lot of families get through this rough time and i appreciate the uh also mentioning the some of the bonuses that will hopefully will come out of this but meanwhile there's so many unknowns i think we just have to um carry on sharing information working together and uh hoping hoping that there will be a, a, a positive outcome for in some way for everyone at the end of this. So once again, thanks so much to our hardworking team who um, really put their whole efforts in over spring break and um, have us off to a good start right now. Thank you. Thank you. OK, we have a question from Dave Harper and uh, his question is, now that the board has passed a three year calendar with a two week spring break in each year, what if any mitigation efforts? Oh, can't see it now. <laughs> you see, I guess I'll go to published here. What if any mitigation efforts will be made to support those families that depend on schools being open? Uh, could open that up to Dr. Morrow or our, one of our associate superintendents. Uh, can you see the question? I, I can't see it, but I'm happy to respond to that, uh, Trustee Franklin. OK. OK, yeah, I think uh, thank you for the question, Dave. And I know that uh, we've had conversations around ensuring that uh, particular vulnerable students um, are taken care of and have a plan. Uh, there's two things. Uh, I'll answer that question in two parts. I think part one is, uh, my hope in having a three year calendar that includes a two week spring break will allow for our community agencies that often plan activities and supports for families are given uh, that additional planning time. I know that we often uh, do have requests uh, early from some of our partners uh, within the community for what the calendar will look like so that they can plan appropriately. Uh, and secondly, uh, we are uh, going to explore 
uh, the possibility of using some of our educational assistance to provide uh, additional programming uh, over at least one of those weeks. So that is uh, in the queue of things that we'll explore. Uh, thank you, Dr. Morrow. So uh, in terms of closing remarks, uh, Trustee Briggs, would you like to say anything? Well, hearing that, we'll go. We'll come back to you if you want to. Uh, Trustee Eddy. I'd like to, of course, echo the sentiments of all other trustees in thanking our senior management team. Uh, but from a personal point of view, I want to speak to the fact that I did receive that message from the principal of Cary High, as I do have a high school student, and he now at week three is struggling with the isolation, with the lack of things to do. We as a family are struggling a bit, as I'm sure most are, with entertaining our children, figuring out how we're going to provide educational opportunities. And I was speaking, uh, I was speaking and reflecting on this with an, a retired educating friend of mine, and she said something really poetic to me and she said learning happens everywhere as we all know and if you as a family don't have the capacity to maybe meet the internet challenges and things that are necessary you can learn with your child in a, a lot of different ways in your home environment by just keying in and i want to thank the principal of Carrie high for sending the email out regarding counseling services for those students that are struggling and maybe are having some difficulties coping with the changes. And yeah, it's an extraordinary time. And uh, it's also an incredible gift of a period of time to spend at home as a family reconnecting and rebuilding relationships that maybe get lost in the in the static of everyday life. Thanks, thanks for your comments. Uh, Vice Chair Kerr, do you have any final comments? Turn my mic on. Um, one of the characteristics or a couple of the characteristics of successful people are adaptability and resilience. And right now we're living in a world that has been for many people, for most of us, has been turned upside down. And I'm seeing that adaptability in our school district board office and our schools. And I'm sure that with you know many of the families and parents and students. Um, in our district, um, we're also seeing that same adaptability and resilience. So to me, that's a that's a large lesson um, just in everyday life. Um, this this is a trying time, but at some point, you know, either in the short term or the long term, we have no idea yet. Um, we will get through the other side. I guess my my wish for everyone is that uh, they do everything they can to keep themselves safe and healthy and listen to the directives of the provincial health officer concerning social distancing, um, sanitation, and just all of the things, all of the things that help keep you healthy. As far as uh, learning, I, I echo uh, Trustee Eddie's comment. People learn every day. It doesn't have to be a school setting. I mean, it can be on the beach. It can be reading a book. It can be in your backyard. It can be anywhere. So uh, these are chances to extend um, learning beyond what would be in the classroom. So I really hope that people take the opportunity that is presented um, rather than looking at it as a, as a difficulty, but looking, looking at it as an opportunity to learn different things in different ways and perhaps discover new things about their learning. So I, you know, I really wish everyone the best, and I, I hope we all get through this thing, you know, um, safe and healthy. Thank you, Trustee Kerr. So uh, my final comment: I was out in my uh, garden uh, pulling weeds, and uh, a little boy came by uh, on his bicycle, and he was staying a good distance away from me, and he had a had a notepad and he was looking at the house and 
writing down some numbers. And uh, we had a nice chat about what he was doing. He told me all about the COVID-19 virus and how he uh, was uh, doing some math. He was going around the neighborhood, counting up the number of hearts that had been posted up in the windows. So uh, we, he was only about eight years old. So uh, uh, it was really kind of fun to have a conversation with him. And uh, so these are the kind of things that uh, parents are doing with their kids uh, to keep them keep them interested and uh, uh, having some fun with with learning. So I think that's great. Now I don't see any more questions, so we will now be able to move to adjournment. I would hear a motion to adjourn. So move taken. Moved by Daryl Hagan. There needs no needs be no seconder for a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion is adjourned. Good night.